us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the church and our online family and friends come let's worship the lord and give him the honor and praise as do his name thank you so much for joining us on this morning we pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends our scripture this morning will come from psalm 96 verses 1 through 10 that's Psalm 96, verses 1 through 10 in the New Living Translation. And it reads, Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Each day, proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The God of other nations are mere idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. Tell all the nations, the Lord reigns. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all peoples fairly. The psalmist is singing out his praises to God. He is overwhelmed by what all God has done. And when we reflect on God's majesty and his goodness to us, we cannot help but to tell others about him. God has chosen each one of us to publish his glorious deeds. And we do that by telling others what he did for us. Praise from our great God should overflow from our lips. I can't speak for you, but let me tell you, God has been good to me. God allowed me to wake up this morning and he allowed me to have my five senses. One of my nieces contracted the coronavirus and she lost her sense of smell and her sense of taste. And she said that was the most horrible thing for her. But after she got over the virus, she was thanking God for healing her and giving her back her sense of smell and her sense to taste. She said beforehand she would wake up in the morning and thank God for waking her up. She says now, when she wakes up, she thanks God for waking her up and for giving her her five senses. You know, this pandemic has taught us not to take anything for granted. We cannot take anything for granted because we don't know if we're gonna be here tonight. That's why we give God glory and we come to you this morning for no other reason but to worship God and to give him the praise that's due his name. God has been so good to all of us. And so why not just worship him this morning and give him the praise and the honor that is due his name. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Come, let us 
worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the Father God, we thank you this morning, Father God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you again, Father, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you for wrapping your arms around us. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to make our way again to worship. God, we thank you for your mercy, for keeping us all week long, all night long and all day. Lord, we praise you. We do not count it for granted that you brought us this far and we praise you today. God, we know that nobody did it but you. We honor you today. Now, Father, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless your word to go forward, that men, women, boys, and girls will recognize you as God, that they will glorify you, they will submit to you, and they will bless your holy name. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Worship him. Worship him. Yes, Lord. Worship him. Give him. Give my God the glory. Give my God. Give my God the praise. Worship him. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, worship him. Yes, worship him. worship him today. We thank God for who he is and what God has already done. He has blessed us again to come to worship him and we praise him for it. He has given us a chance to worship him and it's a blessing. It's an honor. It's another great opportunity. It's a privilege to be able to worship God. Get up out your bed and worship him. Get, get up out of your sitting place and worship him and glorify his name for god has given us another blessing another day to worship him let me call your attention to deuteronomy chapter 8 deuteronomy chapter 8 deuteronomy chapter 8 we're walking through this chapter and now we are at chapter 8 verse 15 and we will go from verse 15 to 17 on today 
if the Lord sees fit. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 15 through 17. In the Old Testament, the book is Deuteronomy. The chapters 8, the verses are 15 through 17. When you found it, you will discover these words. Who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery serpents and scorpions, and thirsty land where there was no water? Who brought water to you for you out of a flinty rock? Who led you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has gained me this wealth. I want to talk about don't forget this God's power. Don't forget this God's power. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 15 through 17 paints a vivid picture of this God who has brought the Israelites through the wilderness. And he mentions in here, Moses does, he mentioned in here serpents. When he mentioned serpents, my eyes came wide open. Because I guess it was around the age of 10, we lived on a plantation. For many young people, you don't realize what a plantation is, but on a plantation, we worked the fields. Even at a young age, we worked the fields, and my daddy was a sharecropper on Four Mile Plantation. Four Miles is about eight miles from Belzona, Mississippi, in the country, and about nine miles from Inverness, Mississippi. So it gets so dark out there, you can't see your hand in front of your face. We didn't have any street lights. But I'm reminded of the serpent. I'm reminded of the snake. I know that the snake from the beginning of time was sly. He was subtle. He had a way of sneaking up on you. And if you really, really look at a snake, right before that snake attacks, he's coiled up with his head laying flat on the rest of his body. And he looks like he's dead. But the moment you see the snake coiled up, you can bet the next moment he's going to strike. A snake is a venomous creature. A snake is a deadly creature. You see, some people have studied snakes, and they can look at a snake and decide whether that snake is harmful or poisonous or not. I can't look at a snake very long and decide anything. Because if I see the snake before the snake sees me, mm. that snake is a dead snake. I know the animal protection group believe that it's inhumane mm. <laughs> to kill certain snakes because some of them are grass snakes, some of them are king snakes that, that look out for mankind. But I come to the conclusion at an early age, I can look out for myself. So as it was in Four Mile, Mississippi, we, we didn't have a washer and a dryer the way we have now. But what we had instead was a washing machine with a round cylinder top that you threw clothes into this barrel. 
this cylinder, this barrel would, would take your clothes and it had a spinner in the middle of it and it would wash your clothes back and forth until many times the clothes were really clean. And then when you took the clothes out, you would run them through a roller. It was two rollers that met together on top of each other and you would put the clothes through there to drain out most of the water and the water would drip back down into that cylinder. After you finish washing the clothes and running them through that roller, wringing out some or most of the, the water, then you would take it to the line outside and you would hang the clothes on the line to get dry, get completely dry. But in between going from the washer to the lion, the line, you would want to dump the water out. And there it was at the age of 10. You see, that's why I don't understand children not working at the house because we came out working. We, we were born to work. So in between the time where you would take the clothes to the washer from the washer to the line, you would dump the water out. And when you dump the water out, you would have to reach down and grab a handle, pull that handle, and it would turn the tub upside down. Or some of us were sophisticated enough to have created a funnel that would take the water out away from the house. So here I am at the age of 10 or so, and I reach down to grab the handle to dump the tub, dump the water out of the tub, and upside the wall jumped a snake that was about eight feet long. I was petrified. I, I was stuck in my position. I was standing there watching that snake as he slowly moved his way back to the wilderness. I couldn't even pick up a hole to kill the snake. I had to call my brother. Hey, my younger brother had to kill the snake because I was still in a motionless position. From that time on, I realized the power of a snake. I realized the danger of a snake. But most of all, I realized that God kept me from getting bit by the snake. I realized, I realized that God kept me from, from, from the snake he put distance between the biting of the snake and my hand, my arm, my leg, my body. It reminds me that God blesses us in danger seen and unseen. God keeps us when we cannot keep ourselves. In the text, Moses reminds the Israelites that it is God that has kept you. Yes, he said previously to them in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he said to them that God blessed you. He brought you out of the house of bondage. God has blessed you. He gave you manna. And your family members and your predecessors, your ancestors did not know it. God has blessed each of us this morning. Mm -hmm. Moses says in Deuteronomy 8, 15 through 17, we want to look at that God. <laughs> My subject today is don't forget this God's power. Amen. Not only do we want to look at God, we want to also look at the power of this God. We want to look at the fact that God keeps us in spite of us. Yeah, God even controlled the, the snake's brain or mind. He controls the accuracy of the snake. And I thank God that over 47 years ago, God manipulated the snake where he would show me the danger without the danger attacking me. There ought to be somebody with me today that can testify that we serve the almighty God. Yes, and this God has power Amen. to keep us when we can't keep ourselves. Yes, 
I want to let you know today that you're not able to keep yourself. Mm. All the money in the world cannot keep you. Mm. All the healthy eating that you can go about doing, and we ought to eat healthy, but it cannot keep us. Yes. All of the exercise, and we ought to exercise, all of the exercise that we do cannot keep us. Only God is able to keep us. I say to you today, if that snake had bit me that day, I may be standing before you, but I may not. <laughs> if that snake had bit me that day, I, I may be standing before you, but I may have some paralysis. I want to say that I am so conscious of the fact that even though I didn't see the snake, the God that I served, he saw the snake. Matter of fact, the God that I served was able to control the snake, where snakes are very accurate when they launch at you. But this particular day, God blessed the snake to, to hit the wall instead of hitting my hand, instead of hitting my body, instead of hitting my arm, instead of yes. hitting my face. I want to say to you today, I don't know what you've been through and I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how God has protected you, but I tell you for sure, there are some dangerous spots that you have been in where God kept you and you didn't yes. even know about it. There are some dangerous spots. There are some dangerous spots that you have found yourself in and you didn't even know it was dangerous, but God protected you and kept you in dangers seen and dangers unseen. The God that we serve is such an awesome God. He, he sees everything. He knows everything. Yes, he is the omniscient God. He knows everything before it happens. He is the all-powerful God, and that's what we want to talk about today. We're talking about the omnipotence of God. He is all-powerful, and not only is he all-powerful, he is, he is, he is omnipresent. He is all places. I thank God that he was in the country on the plantation. <laughs> I thank God that it, it wasn't... In River Oaks. It, it wasn't that he was in Sugar Land. It wasn't that he was in Houston. But the God that I serve is an awesome God. He is such an awesome and omnipresent God. He was even on Four Mile, Mississippi. In the dead country. On the plantation. And he didn't have to stop what he was doing. But God, the God that we serve, is able to multitask all the way down in Four Mile, Mississippi. He saw this snake, <laughs> and he saw the intentions of the snake, and he, he turned that snake another way. Moses re reminds the children of Israel that I'm talking to you hmm. about the God who led you through the great and terrible wilderness. God led them. God led them through the great and terrible wilderness. God, God took care of them. God blessed them. Their shoes didn't wear out. Their feet didn't swell. Their clothing didn't wear out. For 40 years, they walked in the wilderness, and they did not need a podiatrist. <laughs> they had God. You do know that God is the great physician. He is the one that keeps us in spite of us. He keeps us in spite of our meanness, in spite of our cruelty, in, in spite of our bad attitude. God just keeps Amen. on keeping us. Moses said he led them through the great and terrible wilderness. Moses says he, first of all, led them through the great wilderness. This word great means uh, great in the sense of mighty. And then he says he led them through the devastation of the terrible fearful. This word terrible means fearful. I want to tell you today, you may be in a wilderness today. Your wilderness may be your lack of income. Your wilderness may be your unemployed situation. Somebody wilderness this morning may be the pandemic and COVID-19, but God keeps us through our wilderness. 
thing that he points out here that the wilderness can be good to you and be good for you. The wilderness, somebody that's in a wilderness right now, God would not have been able to get your attention the way he has your attention now if you had not gone through the wilderness. The wilderness, the, the children of Israel, they, they went through the wilderness when they could have just gone a few miles. They wandered through the wilderness when if they had obeyed God, they could have just gone around the corner. That's how it is with us. If we don't obey God, if we want to do it our own way, sooner or later, it will get to the point where we're just wandering through the wilderness. We become like a hamster on the wheel. And we're just running in place and we're running and never going anywhere, never getting anywhere. Have you been there? Have you been there that you worked all you could, made all the money you could, and never had enough? Have you been there where, where you have did you have done everything right and you still get sick? Have you been there when, when you uh, exercise over and over and over again and things really won't pop back in place? Have you been there when you, you had a job and that job wasn't sufficient? It's your wilderness situation. Have you been there when you have prayed over and over and over again? It seems like God has shut down heaven and is not hearing you as you cry to him. Let me say, say to you today, keep praying. Keep confronting God. Keep blessing the name of Jesus. Keep giving to God's program. God is even in the wilderness. He says, he says, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness. The wilderness can be bittersweet. You see, it was sweet because when they got hungry, God fed them manna. When they got thirsty, God gave them water. You see, God has a way of testing us, and it's right there in the text. It says, God led them through the terrible and the great wilderness, this wilderness which had fiery ser serpents. Let me tell you, I can go without eating for a little while, but I can't deal with serpents. <laughs> I can I can go without another suit of clothes for a while, but I can't deal with serpents. I can deal with scorpions. He said there were fiery serpents and there were scorpions and they got thirsty and they needed food. I can do without water for a while, but I can't deal not two seconds with serpents. God says, he led us. He led them. Through the wilderness, in the midst of serpents. And when they got bit, when they got bit by these serpents, Moses simply took a serpent and held it up on a stick. And those who looked at the serpent, when Moses held it up, they were healed immediately. That's what John chapter 3 is all about. John chapter 3 talks about the fact that, that when Jesus is compared to the serpent, when Jesus is lifted up, men look to Jesus and they are spiritually healed right away. So Moses, Moses reminds them that this is the God. I'm talking about the God that we ought not forget. Don't forget this God's power. He says, he says, he says that, that he led them through the wilderness, and this wilderness was full of fiery serpents, it was full of scorpions, and it was a land where they thirst for water. But this is the God who brought water to them out of flinty rock. Moses was able to strike the rock and water flowed out. Moses was able to, to speak to the rock and and water flowed out. Let me tell you, God will always supply our needs, even in the wilderness. Yes. And this issue, this issue that we're going through today, people are going hungry. People, people are, are suffering. People are suffering from sicknesses. We need God on our side. Let me tell you, don't depend on the vaccine because they run out in 16 minutes. Mm. 
We have to depend on God. Yes, we ought to take it. Yes, we ought to look for medical treatment. Yes, we ought to depend on medicine. But we ought to depend on God to keep us in the midst of it. It says that, that when, when they got thirsty, God brought water out of a flinty rock. Have you been thirsty? <laughs> have, you been, have you been in need? <laughs> have you been need something just to wet your tongue with? The Bible says that the God that we serve, the God that we ought not forget, the God who has all power, he presents water in the midst of a dry place. Let me just share with you today, only God can bring water in the midst of the desert. <laughs> I used to work. I used, I used to watch the, the the westerns and how how somebody would be exiled and left in the desert, but all right there in the distance, that water shows up all of a sudden in the desert where there is no water, where there is no well, where there is no pump, there is no hydrogen. All of a sudden, water just shows up in the midst of the desert. I want to say to you that God is able to create an oasis. <laughs> He's able to create an oasis right where we are in the midst of our dry lands, in the midst of our desert situation, in the midst of stuff not going well for us. Some of you have put out application out of application and nothing is going well for you. Hang in there. Wait just a minute because God is going to create an oasis of water that you didn't ever dream of. Only God can do. God can speak to CEOs. God can speak to presidents. God can speak to receptionists. And your name will be called. I pray that your name be called. I pray that God gives you favor. I pray that God blesses you above measure. I, I pray that God gives you more than you can even ask for. He brings water out of a flinty rock. And then he goes on in verse number 16 and he says, The God that we're looking to. The God that we must not forget. The God who has blessed us in the wilderness. He's the God who fed us manna in the wilderness. And our forefathers, our ancestors, those who came before us, didn't even know about it. Mm. Let me just share with you today. It is, it is usually a situation where, where those who come before us know about what we should eat. But the Bible says that God brought fresh new manna for them. If you've been keeping up with your daily listening, Bible listening, you ought to know by now, you ought to know that when God supplied this manna for them, he told them to take your daily worth, take your daily bread. Don't take anything more than what you ought to take. But you always got somebody. You always got somebody that's going to sneak another plate out of the church. You always got somebody that's going to take a trash bag and fill them up with food. That's how it was in, in, in Moses' day. There was somebody who, who would take more than what they need. And then when they went to eat it, it would rotten in their mouths. You see, it says here, when it says that God supplied manna, for our daily use and for their daily use, they did not have to stop pirate. Mm -hmm. They did not have to sit back and put some back for themselves. Many times in other churches, not at this church, but in other churches, many times folk walk in the kitchen to eat and there is no more left. Thank God it doesn't happen at the New Beginning Church. There is no more left. The kitchen staff will tell you, oh, you should have shown up early. We, we don't have any more of that. Mm -hmm. But then when somebody walks in the back of the kitchen, walks in the back of the room, they begin to pull plates out over and over again because the kitchen staff has hidden some plates to take home. The God that we serve wants to present us blessings at the blessing as we need our blessings. That's why we don't have multi-million dollars. Uh, I don't have, rather I put it that way, you may be filthy rich. That's why I don't have multi-million dollars because God is trying to give me just enough to need. Now, when he gives me a multi-million dollar settlement, then it's because I need it. So God is giving them 
manna from above. He's dropping on them just what they need to eat when they need it. And that's why people cannot complain when their car breaks and they have to pay to get their car fixed. Just thank the Lord that you got the money to get it fixed. That's why you shouldn't complain when the water leak shows up in your house. Thank God you got the money to get it fixed. That's why you shouldn't complain about what you eat. Thank God you have something to eat. Because there are those who have nothing to eat. But God is blessing you right now. God is blessing you and he is dropping food down from heaven and he is blessing you. The reason, look at the text. The text says the reason why God allowed them to get hungry was to humble them. Because God knows, God knows. God knows that human mankind, when we get a dime over a dollar, when we get a meal over a meal, when we get a sausage over a meal, we think we got something to brag about. The Bible says that God gave them manna from above as they needed it so he could humble them. He allowed them to get hungry so he could humble them. He allowed them to get hungry so he can test them. He allowed them to get hungry because they needed to depend on him. Let me just share with you today, God wants us to depend on him. He doesn't want us to depend on our resources because he is our source. He doesn't want us to depend on our jobs because our jobs will run out. He doesn't want us to depend on our men and women because the men and the women will run out. He doesn't want us to depend on each other. He wants us to depend on him. And when we depend on God, miracles take place. Miraculous things begin to happen when we depend on God. God wants us to depend on him. He says that he might humble us that he might humble you, that he might test you to do you good in the end. Mm -hmm. Let me just share with you, God has a way of doing us good. Paul picks this thought up in Romans chapter 8 where he says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. Those who love the Lord, just wait a while, God is going to do you good in the end. Those who are called to God's purpose, those who are going through bereavement, just wait a while. God is going to do you good in the end. Yeah, God is going to do you good. God is going to do you good in the end. Just wait just a few minutes. God, just make, wait just a few weeks. Just wait just a few seconds. God is going to do you good in the end. He tested them. My question to you today is God testing you. My question to you today is, is God humbling you? Is God putting you on trial? Is God testing you and, and you're missing it? The Bible says he allowed them to go hungry. He allowed them to get thirsty. He allowed them to go through the wilderness as a test. God has put us to the test. During this pandemic, God is, is going to see, and we're going to see who's real and who's not. Yes. God has already revealed some things. God has, has already revealed some things before us. He, during this last presidency, God reveals some things. Yes. He emboldened those who used to wear hoods. He emboldened those who, who don't wear hoods now. We're going to see a lot of white hoods marching now because they've been emboldened by this past administration. Mm -hmm. They have taken their hoods off. They've strapped on guns and badges. They've taken their hoods off, and they, they have jogging suits and jogging pants. They've taken their hoods off. So God has revealed some things to us. It's simply amazing to me. Guys who we studied the word together, 
guys who we sit down at lunchtime and, and studied the Bible together. We, we debated about what God was really saying in, in the Bible studies, in the chemical plants and in refineries. We would sit down and, and read the Bible together and, and they would hug me and tell me how much they love me. It's amazing to me in the last five years I see the, them being emboldened for the sake of racism. I began to wonder. I spent 35 years going fishing with them and boots way up to uh, up to my chest wading in the water and they could have left me out there. I, I have come to the conclusion that God has revealed some things, have revealed some people, and it's for our own good. Yeah, we, we thought a lot of folk was on our side. We thought we thought a lot of races were, were coming together. We thought that we really loved each other and we were really walking down the road with each other. But now I see the real story. Yes. That's why we can't depend on man. We have to depend on God. God is putting us through a test. He, we, we are walking through a test. The question today is, will you stay with God during this pandemic? Will you stay with God through your racial testing? Will you stay with God through this social injustice? Will you stay with God with, through this unemployment at an all-time high? Will you stay with God during this sickness? Will you stay with God when you can't get what you want to get? Will you walk with God? God has placed us in a test. Then this final verse for today, verse 17. It says that once we've been blessed, we have a tendency to forget the power of this God. We have a tendency to move beyond God. We have a tendency to, to tell God psychologically and spiritually, I don't need you anymore. When we are blessed, when we have all the water we need, when we have all the food we need, when we live where we want to live, when we drive what we want to drive, we, want, we have a tendency to no longer depend on God. He identifies it right here in verse number 17, Deuteronomy chapter 8. He says, then you say in your heart. First of all, it begins in your heart. It begins in your innermost being. It begins in your spirit, man. It begins to bubble up in you. What as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when you see people that's doing crazy, unjust things, it's always been in their heart. It's always in his heart. It's always in their heart. Uh, just the other day, uh, a Georgia patrolman got fired because he said something, and the chief said, I don't know what's in his heart, but I know what came out of his mouth. And let me just share to you today, uh, if it came out of his mouth, if it came out of his mouth, chief, it was also in his heart. Yes. When, when he said, he said, don't worry about me shooting you to one Caucasian lady. Only thing we do is shoot black people. It was in his heart first. And it came out of his mouth. And let me just share with you, what's in your heart will sooner or later come out to your mouth. And what's in your heart will come out into your lifestyle. And what's in your heart will make sure that you don't, it doesn't stay in your heart. It will be revealed on the way you treat people. It's in our heart. So Moses says, then you say in your heart, my power. Mm hmm the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. We must not forget this God. We must not forget the power of this God. We must not forget this God's power because this God's power is what keeps us. He says that when you get what you want to get, when you go where you want to go, when you do what you want to do, and then you will say that my power my hand got me where I am. This word power, this word power means my might, my strength has gotten me there. It's always been disturbing to me 
when children get their education. They want to come back home and tell the folk that got them there how to pronounce words, how, how to do this and how to do that. And they, they look down on the folk that have, have picked them up and got them there. They look down on the people who, who have worked several jobs to get them there. They look down on people who have borrowed, who have, who have gone to two and three jobs, who have, who have struck floors, who have worked on their knees to get them there. And all of a sudden, I have arrived because I got a degree. That's how folk treat God. The Bible says that they, they came to the conclusion, the Israelites came to the same conclusions that Americans have come to. Uh, we are the great power. We are the great superpower. We are the ones who have gotten ourselves there. Matter of fact, we have gotten ourselves there with our own power. It says that I, I have used my own strength to get here. I have, I have gotten to a point where I have gained substance and I have gained wealth. He says, look at look at what Moses Moses says, my power and my might of the hand of my own hands, I have gained this wealth. Mm -hmm. Now here it is, people in the wilderness, people that God has blessed, people that God has brought out of slavery. People that God has allowed their clothes to last for 40 years. People that God didn't even need a foot doctor. They declare my power and the hand of my power have gotten me here. Lord yes. have mercy. I, I understand really well. I understand really well. I, I'm not. I'm not on the plantation anymore. Not because of how smart I am. Not because of what I've done. Not because of of who has done it for me. Other than the fact that God has brought me out, yes, and I ought not look down on those who are still going through. Mm -hmm. Says my might. They say my power. My strength, my substance has been gained with my own hands. God deliver us from the day that we think that we are so special and we got it going on so well until we've done it all on our own. Dr. King says that the United States of America has told, told the people to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Dr. King says, how can you tell a man to pull himself up by his own bootstrap when he is a, a bootless man? Mm -hmm. We have to understand if we're going to get some boots, if we're going to get some straps, if we have some boots, if we have some straps, regardless of what we have, God is the one that gave it to us. It's by his power. I warn you today. In this little message, I warn you today, don't forget this God. Don't forget this God. Don't forget this God's power. Don't forget what this God has done. Don't forget how God has brought you out of whatever he's brought you out. Some of you have been brought out of abusive situations. You, it's, not, it's not because you, you got out. It's not because somebody pulled you out. It was God who brought you out. Some of you have gone through some mental situation. God has kept your mind. <laughs> and if God can keep your mind, you can be kept. Because we can't keep our mind. The psychiatrist can't keep our mind. The psychologist can't keep our mind. Only God. It is the power. The power of the almighty God who keeps us. And he keeps right on blessing us. Thank God for this God. Not only does he bless us with wealth. Not only does he bless us with substance, not only does he bring us through our wilderness situation, through his power, he also blesses us spiritually. Yes. It was over 2,000 years ago that our God, this God, through his power, brought on the scene Jesus the Christ. He, he blessed us spiritually. We were on our way to hell. He, he blessed us spiritually. Jesus got off in Bethlehem of Judea, born by a virgin woman. 
Jesus the Christ got off in Bethlehem of Judea. They took him out and laid him in a hog trough. They took him out and wrapped him in strips of cloth. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ is the one who delivers us. He's the one who keeps us. Jesus himself walked these mundane shores, giving sight to the blind, helping the lame to walk, converting dead folk to living folk. Jesus himself did it. That God that we serve, the God that we worship, allowed his only begotten son, his only unique son, to die over 2,000 years ago. They hung him on a cross. They lifted him high. John chapter 316 says that, that Jesus is compared to the serpent that was killed in the wilderness. The serpent that Moses lifted up on the post. The Bible says, so as, as the serpent was lifted up, so is Jesus lifted up. He was, he was dead. He was buried in a barber tomb. He rose on the early that third day morning. He rose for you and he rose for me. It's by God's power. Yes. It's by God's power we're saved. It's, it's by God's power we're on our way to heaven. It's by God's power and God's ability to walk with us and to keep us. Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> if it had not been for God, I would be on my way to hell. If it had not been for Jesus, you would have been on your way to hell also. But God blessed us. God has kept us. God has walked with us. And God has seen fit that when we leave this world, we can go to heaven when we die. We can only do it through Jesus. He died for you. And they made the mistake of lifting up Jesus. Jesus says in John chapter 12, verse 32, that and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He's yet drawing. He, he's yet pulling. He, he is yet getting the attention of men who have fallen short, men who have not done the right thing. He is yet getting our attention. It's through God's power, not our power. Don't forget this, this God. Don't forget this God in the power of this God. If you want to go to heaven when you die, this is your moment. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity. You can get to know Jesus right here, right now. Though the church is open, the invitation is extended. You can come to Jesus. You may not have the water you want. You may not have the bread, the food you want. But you can have Jesus. The door of the church is open. Will you come to Jesus? You can get to know him today. You can get to know him regardless of what you've been through. Regardless of what you have done. You can just believe the story. That over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. Yeah, they killed him. After he died, they took him off the cross and laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. If you believe this story today, you can be saved right here, right now. The door is open. Would you just bow with me and invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord, to be your Savior? You can do so by just repeating after me. Will you bow and just repeat after me right now? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. 
Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you're now born again. And we believe that when you die, you're on your way to heaven. But there may be some of you who are still struggling with sin, as I do. I want to pray with you and pray for you. You can repent of your sin right now. You can rededicate yourself to Christ today. Lord Jesus, we pray for these who who realize that they've fallen short, who realize that they have not followed your way, who realize that you are not their Lord. We ask you, Father, to bless them. Bless them to submit to you and bless them to be about your business. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who don't have a church home or who is in between church homes. I recommend the New Beginning Church. You can just inbox me and let me know that you want New Beginning to be your church home, whether you are local or you are global. Whether you're in Houston or not, you can become a part of a great family of faith at the New Beginning Church. Just inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We'll get you all the documentation and you can join by way of broadcast. Many have. Some have joined, quite a few have joined last year and the year before because of our broadcast. So if you want to join, you can do so. Just inbox me and let me know. I'll be praying with you and I'll be praying for you that you will submit to this awesome God. Don't get blessed and forget this God we serve. Whatever you do, Trust him because he's available to us and for us. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift. You can give to the Lord in three ways. First of all, you can give by way of Cash App. You can give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls, dollar sign, NBC Souls, dollar sign, NBC Souls. You can give by way of Cash Tag. Cash Tag, NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com or you can give by way of mail our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 you can mail your offering to New Beginning Church P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 Thank you so much for joining us here today Please continue to join us on Sunday morning Facebook Live Every Sunday morning Continue to join us Every Sunday morning At 9 a.m. At 9 a.m. 9 a.m. every Sunday morning and also join us on Wednesday night at 7 20 7 20 p.m. on Wednesday night every Wednesday night here on Facebook live every Wednesday night and then come back on Sunday and join us again for this live broadcast for our church service for our church service Right here at 10.45 a.m., 10.45 a.m., you can continue to join us. We, uh, we appreciate you being with us on today. We appreciate your offering. We appreciate you giving to us. And we appreciate you giving to the ministry of God. Let me pray for this offering. Lord, we thank you for those who have given. We thank you for the gifts. We ask you to continue to bless us as we continue to give unto you. Bless every giver. 
bless every person who listens. Bless, Father God, that we will be committed to you and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen. We are still doing our Bible listening. We are doing our Bible listening uh, for, for this year, our Bible listening. Today is January the 24th. January 24th. January 24th. We will finish uh, chapter 30 today. Today is scheduled to be chapters 28 through 30. We should finish chapter 30 today on the 24th. Those of you who have, have gotten behind, those of you who have, have not been able to keep up, this is Bible listening. If you need your schedule, let me know. I'll send you a schedule. This is Bible listening, not Bible reading. So the person on your electronic device gets to pronounce all the big words for you. And I'm asking you to not only listen, but to take notes what God is speaking to you. Journal down what God is saying to you during your Bible listening. And at the end of this year, you will have the Bible listening summary in your own words. And God, you can go back and read over them and God can say some special things to you. I said to you already, I, I, I've been listening and reading the Bible for many years, and there are some simple things that's in the Word of God that I didn't see before. So every time we open the Word of God, we see great things jumping out at us. Let me tell you, the Bible tells us that uh, we are to search the Scriptures, for right? in them lies life. Thank you so much. So please, ma'am, please, sir, catch up with our Bible list. that schedule. Uh, we already have the schedule out for the year. We're presenting the first quarter as we move along. So please, ma'am, please, sir, continue your Bible listening and watch what God has to say. Now let me just share with you. If you are too busy to spend time with God, you are too busy. We also have our daily Bible reading for that leads up to our Sunday school. I send that out every Monday morning. So uh, if you're not on my list, give me a, a, a message and let me know that you're not on the list. I'll be glad to add you to the list. And uh, so we are reading the Bible and preparing daily for Sunday school for that Sunday. And we're listening daily to the word of God. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of our service. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for Jesus the Christ. Thank you for him saving our lives. We ask you to bless those who, who have led in prayer today. We ask you, Father God, to secure them, keep them focused, keep them in your will and your way. Lord, we thank you that you have put us to the test. And we thank you, Lord, that we are able to come out of the test shining as pure gold. We ask you to bless us now. Bless us as we are dismissed from this place, but never from your presence. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing threefold. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.